when I first heard about the COVID shutdown, I was optimistic, thinking it would last two, maybe three weeks tops. I expected a quick return to normalcy. Well, that didn't happen. As you know, things took an unexpected turn, and any optimism I had quickly disappeared. In less than a month, things were so overwhelming. This thing was too much. Staying positive was a challenge. The circumstances prompted me to make a tough decision, to temporarily stop seeing new therapy clients. Amid the heaviness and despair, I got a text message from an old client. She wanted to come back to therapy, and I decided to reconnect with her. I know what I just said, but she and I had worked well together in the past, and I didn't think it would be an issue talking about work, relationships, and how she was adjusting to COVID. I thought it would be a welcome reprieve amongst all of the challenges we were facing. The day comes that she and I meet, virtually of course. We exchange pleasantries. We talk about how it had been two years since the last time we met. Then she tells me that she needed to come in, that she needed to be seen because her father was in the hospital on a ventilator with his organs declining due to COVID. Wait, what? I'm thinking. Is this a joke? I let you come back because you were safe. We were supposed to talk about dating, how you were doing with COVID, how your job was going. I felt betrayed. You see, my father was just in the hospital on a ventilator with his organs declining due to COVID and he died. The pain was beyond words. The grief and abyss I feared I would never emerge from. My family was shattered. My world once steady was now a tempest of emotions, navigating sorrow, anger, confusion, uncertainty, and profound emptiness, all in isolation. I was afraid to be with my mother because I didn't want to kill her, but I already told her yes. I saw her face. I heard her voice. So we met each week. Gradually, I understood the opportunity. The opportunity to help another soul grappling with such inconceivable circumstances. But it also helped me in my grief. As I struggled to make sense of the passing of my father, my client's father was losing his battle to this unforgiving virus. It was as though fate had orchestrated this encounter, aligning our paths in the most poignant and purposeful way. I prayed that her family didn't suffer the same fate as mine. Each time she logged in, I prayed that she would have good news. I hoped and I prayed 
I prayed and I hoped. COVID took my client's father about a month later. As a social worker and a therapist, professional norms discourage self-disclosure. I found myself compelled to share with her that my own father had also succumbed to COVID-19. I didn't want to just be a therapist in that moment. I wanted to just be a human navigating the same stormy seas of grief and loss during a pandemic because of the pandemic. I listened to her share her pain. I listened to the memories that she had of her father and her longing to see him again. And I heard my own sentiments as I helped her, she helped me because having those discussions, having those conversations unearthed a strength in me that I thought had been depleted by sorrow. And I rediscovered something very important, that we heal in community Through empathy and reciprocity, we get through hard times. The therapists are trained to have very strict boundaries. Self-disclosure can blur professional lines. It can trigger a client. It can wrongfully make them put their focus on you, the therapist. So we talked about that. I really just wanted her to know that I understood from a place that no book could have ever taught me. In that moment, we were two daughters whose families would never be the same. Self-disclosure can also build trust and it can also make, it can also create normalcy during a very extraordinary time. I question sometimes whether that was the right thing. I know in that moment it felt, it felt essential. And it came from a shared grief and a love for family. So I'm not exactly sure if it was right. I think it may have been. But I know one thing. I would absolutely do it again. Thank you.